There's very little data available that quantifies only fructan in grass. While there's a lot of data on water-soluble carbs, which includes both fructan and sugar. Some animal scientists have used water-soluble carbs to support the theory that fructan is responsible for laminitis. I hope you're beginning to understand why whenever they cite a number for fructan or sugar, I'm looking for them also to cite the analytical procedure by which that number was generated. In grass, high sugar content is the trigger for fructan formation, then sugar levels off. This trigger point will vary depending on the species and environmental conditions. Ryegrass and fescue are two species that tend to have a higher percentage of fructan in water-soluble carbohydrates. But it would be uncommon to find grass that is high in fructan without also having high levels of sugar. If water-soluble carbs contains too much stuff to interpret, might ethanol-soluble carbs be a better test? Some nutritionists think so. Ethanol-soluble carbs is sometimes incorrectly assumed to be only simple sugars. There is currently no commercial test for only simple sugars. Ethanol-soluble carbs also includes the really short chain fructooligosaccharide. Theoretically, these would ferment fastest and cause more damage to the gut. Fructo-oligosaccharide has recently been shown to cause a rise in insulin levels of ponies with insulin resistance. So, ethanol-soluble carbs may include those carbs most apt to trigger a glycemic response. We don't really know because there's been no research to know if long-chain fructan also cause a glycemic response. It's extremely difficult to extract in pure form or to find it in forage all alone. So the effect of long-chain fructan in horses may remain unknown for some time to come. A few nutritionists and feed companies who theorize that ethanol-soluble carbs are more important decided to change the definition of non-structural carbs to ethanol-soluble carbs plus starch which makes me crazy because non-structural carbs are not equal to ethanol-soluble carbs plus starch. We can't go around changing definitions. There's already too much confusion. I feel that the reason we're having so many problems feeding horses is that there's a lack of communication between forage scientists and equine nutritionists. How can we tell forage scientists what we want if we cannot describe it in terms that we both agree on? The lack of standard nomenclature only widens this gap in understanding. We have to agree to speak the same language if we're going to work together to solve these problems. The term sugar can mean a lot of different things. There are simple sugars, which generally mean mono or disaccharides, one or two molecules at a time. Sugars can also be complex. When you have a lot of sugars stuck together, we call them polysaccharides. Because fructan is a polysaccharide, some may include fructan as a sugar in a general sense. There's invert sugars and reducing sugars that are particular fractions that can be quantified by specific analytical procedures. Water-soluble sugars, which include all sugars and all fructans, and ethanol-soluble sugars that include sugar and short fructan. There are five different standard tests for sugar. Do you know what your lab is calling sugar? You might hear about resistant starch. That means resistant to digestion, acting more like a fiber, and possibly causing less glycemic response. Have claims been backed up by research in horses? I've seen feeds specially formulated for laminated horses that have micronized corn. This would make starch more digestible. Whose theory of laminitis do you think is in play in your horse? Rapidly digestible starch may prevent excess fermentation in the hindgut, but will also elicit more of a glycemic response and may worsen metabolic laminitis. 
Sometimes I hear the testing for starch is not worthwhile in hay, but I've seen hays, especially Bermuda, that have appreciable amounts of starch. Test all non-structural carbs in hay. That means water-soluble carbs plus starch. Testing for carbohydrates is more prone to error than some other dietary components. Carbs from morning cut hay may be different from carbs in afternoon cut hay, therefore may be variable throughout a haystack. Random sampling with a hay probe is absolutely necessary for ac accurate results. Because cut grass is still alive and respiring, sample storage temperature on fresh samples can have a large impact on subsequent carbohydrate levels in the final analysis. Even the way a sample is prepared at the lab can have an impact. Studies show that freeze-dried samples preserve more carbs than oven-dried samples. The temperature and duration of oven drying can have an effect by cooking off carbs. The temperature of the extraction solution can affect how much is dissolved, as can the strength of the extra extraction solution. 80% ethanol will pull out different types of fructan than 50% ethanol. The amount of time in the extraction solution matters, and possibly even if they stir it or not. Different acids may be used at differing strengths. When using enzymes to break down polysaccharides, the purity and strength of the enzyme matters. Consistency in carbohydrate testing by wet chemistry requires a lot of steps, exacting measurements, and standard reagents. The procedures lend to human error. As an advocate of carbohydrate testing, I don't want to suggest that it's a waste of time, but we need to realize that the tests may not be as accurate as we would like. If something doesn't look right, rerun the test from another sample. The reaction in an animal must be the most highly regarded testing method. On the one hand, I'm very pleased about the availability of so many new lower carb horse feeds on the market today. But on the other hand, I'm worried that some companies may not be using the same definition for non-structural carbs. We also don't have enough research on what amounts of non-structural carbs are appropriate for the various forms of carbohydrate intolerance in horses. We don't have enough research to know if sugar, starch, or fructan are more important in these various conditions. Does your feed company strive to process grain to keep fermentable carbs lower but may ignore carbs with a higher glycemic response? Or vice versa? The methods to avoid hind gut fermentation may increase glycemic response. We're starting to learn a lot more about how carbohydrates affect horses. There's a lot more to learn. We're going to have to take an interdisciplinary approach to solving the problems of carbohydrate intolerance in horses. We need commercially viable tests for only sugar and only fructan so the veterinary researchers can figure out which ones are most important. Forage breeders, analytical labs, veterinarians, nutritionists, and feed companies will all have to work together. It is imperative that this team use the same language to communicate effectively. Don't compare non-structural carbohydrate test results from one lab to another unless you are certain that they are using the exact same analytical procedure. And to the National Association of Forage Testing Laboratories, please, we need standardized procedures and nomenclature. <laughs>